Welcome to the session Red Hat on how it's built with Google Workspace. It's my pleasure to be your host in this session. And uh, it's my also absolute pleasure to have Red Hat's Jeffrey Dope here in. So, hi, Jeffrey. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you, Michael. How are you? I'm fine as well. Thanks. And great to have you here today. So, uh, we want to hear a little bit about uh, Red Hat's special solution today. Uh, what we've seen is really great. But first of all, tell me a little bit about Red Hat and what you do in your role there. OK, great. Red Hat is a subsidiary of IBM. They, they purchased us a few years ago. And we provide open source software to enterprises. We were, we were founded in 1993. We're best known for uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. But we have a whole portfolio of products from middleware, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, training, and even consulting services. I joined Red Hat in Red Hat IT in 2015, and I was initially responsible for our intranet. I quickly became our go-to person for um, then called Google G Suite, now Google Workspace. And I, I acted as a developer liaison and just a general creative problem solver. That experience brought me to take ownership of all of GCP internal to Red Hat to help empower use cases and to enable our engineers to build OpenShift on top of GCP. OK, that sounds interesting. So you really had an, uh, an interesting journey over the last few years with some interesting steps, as I can hear. <laughs> Um, so when did Red Hat then decide Google Workspace was the right set of tools for their goals? So it was about 2013. Red Hat had about, we had two main productivity tools. We had email and we had IRC, Internet Relay Chat Protocol. So just an archaic chat tool. We had an influx of non-technical people as Red Hat grew. So we needed a, a collaboration and productivity tool set to empower these non-technical users. And we uh, analyzed the market and we ended up on then Google G Suite because it just matched our culture. Um, Red Hat in our open source nature, we're just, we just collaborate. And at the time in, on the market, Google matched that uh, collaboration paradigm far superior than any of the competitors. So, you know, at, right then we stood up uh, Google Drive to provide docs and sheets and forms. We turned on Google Calendar uh, to provide event coordination and, and meetings. And then ultimately we, we turned on Gmail about six months later. Then over the years, we've rolled out Google Chat and Google Meet. And now we run the complete Google Workspace set of solutions. solutions. Wow, that, that's great to hear that you are really now fully rolled out everything and you're a, a full and happy user, as it seems as well. <laughs> that's great. Um, I understand you've built a really exceptional solution here to a problem that every B2B company nowadays faces, so uh, sales enablement. And can you tell me uh, how the need arose and how you decided that a comprehensive chatbot was the best solution for this? Yeah, so it, it, exactly right. It's a, it's a common problem. Our, our salespeople are bombarded with content and they're, they're, they, they struggle to find the latest in the, in the right content. So we originally stood up a WhatsApp app, which was in, incredibly insecure and not scalable. And it was text message based via phone numbers. But the idea was sound. It was to provide an instant interaction to ask questions of, to get resources. At the time we were rolling out Google Chat in the IT organization. So I was tapped to look into that and provide a, an alternative solution. So we quickly implemented a regex pattern based matching system using the, the um, Google Quick Start for um, App Script. And basically if you typed the word help, it would recognize help and give you the help card if you typed ZVO, we would give you this uh, zero value opportunity card. As time's gone on, we've incorporated many other um, services from Workspace and GCP. We've turned on natural language understanding uh, using dialogue flow. We've, we've grown from then. But ultimately, the problem is even exacerbated now in today's COVID world 
pre-COVID, you could just stand up over the cubicle wall and talk to your peer if it was your first day on the job. Now we're giving our uh, sales users Shadowbot, which is the name of the bot that we'll show you soon. And they can just have that same conversation, but with a virtual bot agent and get the same information that they were asking their peer for. Yeah, so, sounds really interesting. And I'm sure that's a, a definitely helpful solution, especially for new hires coming on board with a ton of questions uh, to help really getting their answers quite quickly if they're working from home. Um, all right, so now let's dive into the details here. Uh, describe this chatbot for me. What can it do? How is it used? Um, anything you can share? Yeah, sure. So the, the chatbot is built in a Google Apps script. And it, it is, it is a chatbot like unlike all the chat or like all the chatbots on the platform. You can uh, ask it questions and natural language understanding will return results. We have some, com um, some menu navigation for people who like to browse. Uh, we empower users to interact in their language. Uh, every interaction with the bot is logged to BigQuery which then uh, we can suck down into a Google Sheet to provide dashboarding about the solution. So built into the chatbot, not only is empowering the sales user, but it's empowering our content owners to learn which commands and which content are being used so we can continuously um, increase the effectiveness of the content. Great, then uh, I would say let's jump into a demo. Uh, I'm very interested to see uh, Shadowbot uh, in action now. Awesome, I'd love to show you. So Shadowbot. All Shadowbot is, is a Google chat bot written in app script. Now with any Google chat bot to talk to a bot or to add a bot, you simply come up here and you click on find a bot. So I'll type in shadow and I'll, I'll demo the Shadowbot development bot today. So when you install a bot, it gives you a nice welcome message. Um, just like any bot, you can type help. This is a good example of the way that the bot just intuitively understands commands. So it tells you all about how Shadowbot uses natural language processing using dialogue flow. So I could say something like, what is ZVO? And at Red Hat, ZVO is a zero value opportunity for sales. Shadowbot simply answers the question with some links to some information and some videos on how to process a, a zero value opportunity. You could also give it just some other phrase like I am feeling lonely, which is a weird thing to say to a bot, but we all might be feeling a little lonely in this COVID time. But the bot uses semantics again to present the happiness and well-being initiatives here at Red Hat. So it truly understands what you are asking for. Now, not everyone is comfortable just asking questions to a bot. So for folks that like to browse, we've set up this uh, paradigm using a home menu. So if you type in home, the bot will give you a menu of all things available to you in your region and in your role. So if I was a new salesperson and I needed to know how to manage an account at Red Hat, I could click on account management, dive a layer deeper in the, the knowledge, maybe look at how to do account planning. If I click on account planning, it will give me EMEA account planning guidelines on our intranet. So I get exactly what I'm after. Now about six months ago, approximately, you guys rolled out some functionality at Google called slash commands, and we've taken advantage of these. So all sellers at Red Hat need price books, and price books are simply a document containing our products and their applicable prices in various regions and route to markets. So the bot automatically knows that I am in EMEA based on my identity, and let's say I'm selling directly to a customer and I, I'm selling in euros since I'm in EMEA. Click on search and the bot's going to take that information and return a Google spreadsheet for EMEA direct pricing in euros. So you click on that and it loads up the price book. Some additional slash commands. We have a, a customer escalation. 
So if we have a customer that's an active customer that's having some issues, I can escalate a case for that customer on their behalf. So I can quickly type in a phone number for them to call back. Yes, I'd like a call back. The Red Hat ticket number is ABC123 because we're in a demo. And let's say customer system is down help, which is a fake issue, but for demo purposes, we're in good shape. And the bot just calls an API and escalates that on behalf of the customer. The last slash command I'll show you is something we're doing because Red Hat truly is a customer experience company. We want our customers to have a good experience. And we've taken this so far that us in global sales operations want our customers, Red Hat sellers, to also have a good experience. So we have this new program called Voice of the Field where a salesperson, wherever they're at in the sales journey, whether they're in the quote to order stage or the order of the cash, they can give us a, a score from extremely difficult to extremely easy and then give us a reason why. So imagine I'm a seller and I'm upset with the order to cash process and I could just say the process simply took too long. So I can submit and as soon as I submit, if I score something that's difficult, you can see over here on the left that the bot gave me uh, it injected a, a chat into a voice of the field responders room where it said that Jeff Dalby said that order to cash was extremely difficult and the process simply took too long so that Philip Leonard now who's been at mentioned can instantly respond to Jeff and ask me what's going on how can we make the process better and truly make me the seller feel like my um, opinion counts and I'm being hurt so the last thing I'll show you in Shadowbot is we have a, a settings menu. And in the settings menu, we've got a few different things. So again, I could change my region to any of the other regions. So I'll, I'll keep myself in EMEA for now. I could be in sales and get content customized for me selling or I could set myself to customer experience and get content that is more applicable to supporting customers and their experience. And then uh, lastly, you can see this language section. I can basically interact with the bot in any language of my choice. So Michael, I know you speak German, so for demo purposes, I'll just switch my language really quick to German. Now I can say some of the same things we queried to the bot earlier. I can say, what is ZVO? And I can type in German or in English and the bot will auto translate using the translate API and give me content back in my native language. Now, finally, everything you've seen in this chat bot is being live logged to BigQuery. So I'll pop over here to BigQuery. I'll rerun this query just to get our latest transactions. And you can see that on this very, this very first row, this is what I just said to the bot in German. And I said, what is ZVO? And we have analytics on what I said and whether Dialogflow was able to interpret it. So we can continuously make content better and uh, create relevant content for the users and fix any content that may be broken. So that's Shadowbot. Wow, that was really amazing. Thanks for that quick demo, Jeff. It's so great to see what our partners are creating and are able to uh, yeah, set up for our customers and yourself to use. Um, but now I have another question on this. So what makes this solution so unique in your opinion? So that's a good question. There's, there's a couple different things. Uh, the first thing is the entire solution was initially written by me, but has been written by non-developers. So we're leveraging the power of AppScript and AppScript is just vanilla JavaScript with some Google classes that you can reference. And one of the most powerful things about AppScript is that it interacts with all of the Google Workspace uh, product set, but it runs on the same hardware that powers sheets and calendar and forms and all of your properties 
So whether my user is in Australia, South Korea, Canada, Canada, they all get that same uh, what they'd expect as a, a low latency response time from a chatbot. Um, the second thing I'd say that's unique um, is the interplay between Google Workspace and GCP. Because Red Hat is already a, a Workspace customer, and what what I kind of feel is the glue between those two platforms is the cloud IAM module, so the identity and access management. Since me and my users are logged into Workspace with a Red Hat ID already, we know who they are, we know their region, we know their job title, and it, it, it enables us to create Google Groups to control access to not just things like drive files, but to chatbot functionality and to certain APIs that power the chatbot on GCP. So it, it really makes the development experience uh, much more seamless and things like handing off OAuth tokens, it's trivial as compared to doing this with an external vendor. Makes sense. Sounds, sounds quite interesting and really, uh, yeah, very, very uh, uh, interesting in, in how you build everything and how you set that up. Uh, also that you say you've built it yourself uh, why, with app sheets and everything around. It's quite interesting. Um, last question uh, for you today is, um, what's next for the global sales ops team and your work for the innovation office at Red Hat? Anything you can share already? Yeah. So the, the chatbot's been live in EMEA and APAC for several years now, and we get thousands of interactions per month. Uh, this October, uh, we are going global. So we're using the chatbot to really uh, scale together globally and, and convert regional processes to global processes. In that rollout, we're also going to be adding on a, a ton of new functionalities, integrations with other internal apps, so that, at, you know, as you saw in the demo, so if you need to escalate a customer case, you don't have to go over to another platform. You can just do it right from the bot. So we're going to continue to add additional integrations with our internal apps. Once we've done that, we're going to stand up a, a new platform, and this is part of the innovation office. It's going to be called Distill. And it's going to be our innovation or idea lifecycle management uh, platform and program. Um, we're going to create a, a custom web app that strongly integrates with all of the Google Workspace APIs so that a, a user can jump into our, our web app and say, I have an idea, fill out a simple form. The web app is going to then guide them to a template on Google Drive, which allows them to elaborate it. It's going to go through a, a funnel of choosing the right platform. And as they move through the process, it's going to continue to ask them to elaborate their idea, pulling metadata from the web app and injecting that data into the Google Workspace and Drive templates so that they can focus on innovating and not worrying about how, which charter do I use, which ROI template do I use. So we're going to really allow them to focus on innovation using that integration. Wow, that, that's really interesting. And so there is a lot to come. I'm looking forward to see everything coming to life then from the Red Hat Innovation side. Thanks a lot. We are at the end of the session. And thank you very much, Jeff, for uh, joining us today and presenting uh, the Shadowbot solution from Red Hat. Also, thanks to the audience who was listening in and watching uh, the session with us. And I hope you can enjoy the rest of Cloud Next. Uh, during the day or in all the recordings that are available. Thanks a lot and have a great rest of the day.